Today we are changing the differential gear oil in our Super Duty and we're gonna cover a quick when, where, what, and how to go about doing this. This is not a how-to video, but it's to give you some tips and tricks for changing your differential fluid in your Super Duty. Now, number one, when do you change it? The manual says 150,000 miles, which is insanity. I think, if you, especially if you're towing, you should change it every 30 to 50,000 miles. We are at 30,000 miles and drained the differentials and they were a little dirty, you know, after only 30,000 miles. And we've already changed it once when it was nearly brand new with only a few thousand miles on it. Now, one of the great ideas when you're changing the differential fluid, it's a great time to upgrade your differential covers. Now, we put these on when the truck was about a thousand miles or so on it. And this is a nice steel, heavy duty differential cover for the Sterling 10 and a half rear diff. I'll put a link in the description. If you are looking for a heavy duty diff cover like this, that will withstand rocks. Most of the diff covers out there for these trucks are aluminum. They're not gonna be good for off-road, but they'll be fine for towing and helping get rid of some of the heat in the differential. The front diff, we have the Ox front air locker and that one has a replacement steel cover. So that's great. We have steel heavy duty covers front and rear on this truck. What do you need for changing your differential gear oil? First thing you need to decide is if you're gonna use a gasket or sealant. Now we used the Permatex Black on the rear differential when we replaced the diff cover and the fluid when the truck was almost new and it started to seep oil after about six months. This green gasket maker is actually made for differentials and it's supposed to not leak with the additives that are in this new gear oil. So this would have been what we would have tried to use if we were gonna use sealant. However, sealant makes a huge mess and it takes a lot more work to get the differential cover off the truck because it's glued on. Even after you pull the bolts off, you have to just smash on it to get the thing off. It's a bit more of a hassle and it's a huge mess to clean up, you know, to prepare for uh, re-installation. So we decided to try the lube locker gaskets and they're pretty interesting. They have got this uh, kind of a silicone type sealant around it. It's a metal gasket and it's got some sort of rubber coating. And some people are saying that you can reuse it and that would be great. We'll keep you posted if these will not leak and how they hold up if we can reuse them after our next service. So you can use lots of different gaskets. There's cork gaskets, there's the OE has a gasket, so you can choose that, but you want to make sure you make a choice and get the right parts before you pull it all apart. Now the next thing you need to figure out is what weight of gear oil you're going to run. If you look in your manual, it will tell you for the differentials. Now all the four wheel drive Super Duty trucks are running a Dana 60 in the front. They're going to all require 80, 90 weight oil. And if you want to go with the factory motorcraft, fluid it is actually a non-synthetic and you can get it from any Ford dealer we wanted to go to synthetic so we went with Amsoil which has a good reputation now the rear differentials they made a change especially with this the Sterling 10 and a half it used to be a 75 140 weight gear oil and now they want a 75 85 we went with the 75 90 from Amsoil which is the closest to the factory recommendation. But if you look for the rear differentials on the trucks, if it has the heavy duty tow option, it seems to be where Ford is recommending the 75140 versus the 7580 or 7590, something like that. So definitely take a look at that. We would go up to the 140 if it was showing signs that it was wearing poorly, but it seems to be doing fine in the back for our truck. So we're gonna keep with that. I'm guessing it's something to do with fuel economy and just friction reduction to go with a little bit lighter weight gear oil. So depending on your application, you might wanna select a different weight of gear oil. One of the problems with using sealant on your differential instead of a gasket is the amount of mess it is afterwards to try to clean it up. And 
This works probably the best out of what I've used is just a wire wheel and drill and you can kind of go around and clear off everything, make it nice and clean. You just got to keep it moving so you don't create any sort of gouges in your steel. Um, also, I like to stuff rags inside the differential just to keep any of the particles that fly off from going inside the differential and getting caught in there. So it's not a real fast process, but uh, I think the gasket will make it a lot easier. To scrape all of the ceilings off of the top. Because the sealant was all stuck in here and I'm just cleaning up a little bit for the bolt holes and then I will clean this one out to make sure that we don't have any leftover pieces in there for when we attach them as you can see the rear differential cover is already done and we just need to clean up the truck side and then we can put the fluid back in and we can drive the noble steed again. Before reassembly there's these little pockets and valleys inside the differential that hold fluid. So take some nice blue shop towels and get that all cleaned out anywhere that could possibly be holding old fluid or contaminants. That'll make it a lot cleaner. I use the wire wheel around the outside, a little bit of sandpaper if you got any sort of burrs or whatnot. Get it all nice and clean, use a little parts cleaner. And then same on the differential side, you can set the differential gasket on here and then you can go ahead and put it back up on here get the bolts tightened back up and they really just need to be snugged up but you can torque them as well if you choose to and then we'll add some fluid in we'll see how those new squishy containers work for adding fluid so let's take a look and see how it goes Now on the Sterling 10 and a half, the fill plug is actually on the inside of the diff and you use a 3 8 ratchet to pull it off and it's actually magnetic which is really cool because it'll collect some of the debris and particles so you can wipe that off. Now let's see how well these compressible containers do with filling the differential. See how messy it becomes. It's probably one of the most undesirable parts of gear oil is dealing with the pump and all the mess that it creates. But I would say this is actually really nice. It's much faster than uh, using a pump. Wow, okay. I think, uh, I think these little bags are pretty nice. They're pretty fast. I think I'm a fan of them. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and fill all, all the way up. Basically, we're gonna fill it until the fluid just comes even with the fill plug. And just as it's starting to come out, that's when it's full, which in this differential, I think is just under four quarts. So we'll go ahead and get it filled up. Now, one thing to note, if you do decide to use sealant instead of a gasket, is that you actually have to wait about an hour. Um, so you basically create the gasket on there, you lightly tighten the cover back on, and you let the sealant sit for an hour and then you torque it down and then it recommends waiting for a full 24 hours before you add gear oil to it. Most people don't do that which could be one of the reasons why they start leaking but with a gasket like the lube uh, gasket, lube locker gasket we used, you can just fill it up right away. That's a great advantage there. In the front, the easiest way I've found to remove the differential cover is to break the tie rod free from the driver's side knuckle, and then it can just hang out of the way. We just connected our PSC ram, and it gives enough room then to pull the differential cover off. Now, this, because it has an aux locker, has this little collar ring here as part of the diff cover, and that has to fit right into there. And that's the one trick to doing it, is getting the collar to fit up into there. And we'll be holding the gasket as we try to line it all up. And then we'll tighten it all back down. All right, fill in the front. This is a lot tighter and it still works pretty well. I'd say it's definitely as good as using a pump 
with these squishy bottles. I think it's a good innovation. It's nice to see an innovation after decades and decades of nothing changing with the media of how they transport this gear oil. But uh, yeah, it seems to be doing really nice, nice and easy. I'm impressed. Differentials are all full and we are reassembled. We're good to go again. And if you guys have any thoughts or comments, suggestions or tips for doing differentials, post them up in the comments below. Otherwise, I would give a major thumbs up to those collapsible oil bags for diff fluid. That is so much easier to work with. I think that's a great invention. And I think otherwise we should be good to go. We'll give you guys an update on how these gaskets from Lube Locker work for us and if we get any oil leak or seepage over time here. And we'll be doing some more off-road testing and more adventures coming up. So if you enjoy any of this stuff, give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you can keep posted on our future adventures. Otherwise, we'll catch you later. Thanks so much for watching.